Welcome back. My name is Andrew Poland. I'm the segment director for the National Sales Organization here with, with Schneider Electric. And, and we're bringing you our, the, our fourth episode, our fourth installment, our final installment of the Edge Expert series. And I'll be honest with you, for me, it's a it's pretty bittersweet. I feel like it's kind of like we're, we're leading up to the, the finale of Game of Thrones. Um, I'm kidding, but but the reality is it's, you know, we're at a point now where we've had a lot of important dialogue and discussions around a topic that we believe is very relevant to almost all businesses and all industries where digital transformation is impacting everybody. And there are some level of, of um, practical adjustments that need to be made so that companies can take, it, take advantage of these, these new technologies that are out there that they can that they can provide a better customer experience, better position themselves in their markets, gain a competitive advantage. So, so there's a lot of stuff out there that we really just need to talk through. And, and when you look back about at, at what we've discussed so far, in our first installment in episode one, we talked about standard designs, deploying standard designs. And when you do that type of thing, you, you do create a, a more cost and risk effective of model. Uh, it allows for, for rapid deployment. And, and when you do these designs, ensuring that you design with connectivity in mind so that you can have a greater transparency and visibility into these distributed IT environments, these environments are much, much more mission critical. We'll get into that in, in a little bit, but as they're much more mission critical, you've got to be able to monitor them and manage them uh, uh, at, at a greater rate than, than, than before. And the other thing that does is it really allows you to transform the way you operate and maintain the space. And, and there's a lot of dynamics that need to be considered, but when you have the right management platform, you're leveraging intelligence, you're predictive, and that, that's where you ultimately reduce cost. So today, we're actually going to talk about bringing this all together because these, these distributed IT environments and what we call edge really is becoming a critical component of the overall business strategy. And as such, it should create profitability. And really, that's what we're talking about today is a profitable business model. So with us to, to, to talk through it, we have uh, Mr. Joe Reale. He's our vice president of our solutions architects across North America. And Joe, we're happy to have you back. Well, thank you. It's great to be back. I'm looking forward to having a discussion today and about this exciting talk about Edge and, uh, and how we transform this model into a profitable business model. Um, and uh, looking forward to talking with everybody today. Thank you for having me, Andrew. So it's been uh, it's been a little while since we've gotten together. I think we, we've collectively voted. You are our favorite guest, so that's oh. why we have you back, guest MVP. Um, <laughs> what's new since the last time we, we, we spoke? Oh, that's a that's a good question. So the, the edge is an, it's it's evolving quickly. We uh, actually there was a the conference last uh, this past week where we did the. Uh, the keynote, the keynote event down in, in Texas was really well received. I can tell you this, the edge is at the top of everybody's mind, absolutely positively. There is nothing going on out there without edge in it somewhere. And by the way, there's a lot of companies that are springing up, brand new companies, Andrew, and you know what they're focused on? They're focused on this part of it. They're focused on operation and, and, and being effective in their operation and maintenance of, of the edge platform here. So. A little bit of momentum, a lot of new entries into the market, and it's growing very fast. Cool. So we say edge, maybe we've said it 15 times already so yeah. far. So Sheepers. Why don't we uh, why don't we just take a step back? We did this before, but I think it's important we do it again and just talk about let's level set on what the edge is. Sure. APC Schneider, we have a bit of a simplified view of what this architecture is, but if you could kind of walk us through it. Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, um, if you see, I think we're talking about a lot of things. Everything isn't cloud, okay? Cloud is the hyperscalers, big, big, giant, giant data centers. And, and then we have what we call regional edge and local edge. And let me just explain a little bit um, as we work downstream towards the, the local edge. So the regional edge is multi-megawatt facilities sometimes, right? In tier two, tier three, tier four, and tertiary cities. And... And really, they are a cross-connection point um, that allows companies to really get out to the entire 
network versus mm -hmm. just a small portion of the network. Regional mm -hmm. edge is very good. And when we start to get into the, the local edge, Andrew, now mm -hmm. we're starting to get into businesses, into the storefronts, into the back offices of stores and, and retailers and hospitals and universities and industrial applications. In other words, something that is local on-prem, mm -hmm. okay, is, is, is what we're defining the local edge. And again, it can cover most all industries, uh, yeah. all the way up to even including, believe it or not, the residential edge. Okay. Yeah. So, staying on local edge here. Yes, sir. The, the, physical, the physical makeup, the physical layer, however we want to say it, comes in, in some, some different flavors. It can maybe look and smell a little differently. Can you talk us through a little bit of what it could look like if you have an on-prem local edge deployment sure. at your site? Yes, yeah. so, you know, an on-prem local deployment on site, Andrew, could be as, as small as a 6U wall mount device, okay? Or it could be as large as two, three racks, okay? Um, in, in, uh, in, in the back of, uh, of, of a store. It could mm -hmm. also be uh, one rack, Andrew, in, in MDF, IDF closets that typically have been in high-rise buildings, mm -hmm. typically called the MDF, IDF closet. But today, all of a sudden, the applications that reside inside that environment are very edgy, very, mm -hmm. very edgy, okay? And so it's, it's, it's generally speaking, local edge, yep. generally speaking, starts off, Roughly, maybe six U, or even smaller, all the way up to two, three racks, mm -hmm. depending on the business application. Okay. Yes, sir. Very small. So, it also shows up in a lot of environments. Some right. places that we're familiar with and we've seen before. Other places that maybe are a little new. Can you kind of fill us in on, on where we're seeing this most frequently? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, where we see it most frequently today um, is. In our in our in our retail financial healthcare, mm -hmm. especially healthcare, government, SLED, these are all places that we really starting to see an uptick in 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 edge. Mm -hmm. And and a place that we typically haven't really thought of in the past. Yeah. Is, is digitized and really important is the residential edge. And, and it's, it's home, really coming at home. Yeah. At home. Everything's becoming digitized now, for crying out loud. We got lights flinging on, mm -hmm. coffee makers turning on, garage doors opening. Yep. But all of this associated with actually a digitized IoT environment. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, something else I will say, and I think it's very important to mention here, is that you know as the edge starts to proliferate outward, one of the most important things that we're dealing with, believe it or not, is not power. It's the network and protecting the network and its availability is incredibly important today. There's been a lot of outages lately where the power's on in the store. Mm -hmm. The aisles are lit up bright. It is absolutely fantastic, except they can't do any business. The network is down worldwide. So the network is very important in the edge and being able to protect and harden this environment is really, really critical. I thought I'd make mention of that. Sometimes we forget about the importance of what's mm -hmm. happening here. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, in the Northeast, we've had some storms recently, and, and my power went out at my house, but my network went down, and I was much more worried about my network being down because I had a deadline for my boss, and I had to get it done, and I had to get the email out. So I could have cared less that the power was out, but I needed the network. So to your point, even on a small scale, right? I, I think it definitely resonates it, and from a, to a greater business environment. Yes. So. Um, Let's talk about standard design, designs a little bit. Okay. When, when, when we deploy a standard design, there's a couple things that, that you want to keep in mind. There's yep. best practices that we can all go online and read about. Yep. But there's also very specific business requirements that somebody needs to take into account for that, that is real within their own space. So what are some of the, the, the best practices? How do you understand those business requirements? How do you mash it together so you ultimately get the right solution? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I think before you start with any design, you have to understand what the function is. What do you need out of it? How do you need to get out of it? How critical it is? Okay. Um, and, and what its application is and how it's going to be used. Mm -hmm. And if you miss that, yep. you're going to design something that doesn't work. That's not applicable. So first thing is, is understand your business requirements. Understand the intent of the deployment. What is it? How is it? Why do we need it? How important it is to our mm -hmm. business? And then how do I protect it? How do I, how yeah. do I secure it? So, so once we have the business requirements outlined, then we can start approaching a physical design 
that's matched to the business requirements. And most importantly, when I say matched to the business requirements, everybody, look, it's talking about risk management, right? If I, if I can match something to uh, a requirement, but I, but, I, but I miss the fact that I could take on high risk, then I'm not really going to perform my business function mm -hmm. very well. Yep. So, so understanding this environment really is critical to starting that standardized design. And once you have that business application um, defined, okay, now all of a sudden you can really start to get, put together a standard design that can be re de deployed repeatedly mm -hmm. in a cost-effective manner mm -hmm. that matches speed to market. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by the way, as you have the standardized design, you should always be designing with connectivity in mind. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll get into that in a minute, but yep. but certainly security, availability, and manageability is absolutely crucial mm -hmm. to this thing. And it doesn't start with it. Well, let me rephrase that. It always starts mm -hmm. with understanding the business requirement. Mm -hmm. I okay. cannot match security, availability, and manageability if I don't understand your business requirement. Mm -hmm. It'd be foolish for me to even try, wouldn't it? Clear. Yeah. Very understood. I think so too. So. All right, the next logical question is, we do this, we do it right. What, what does it mean? What happens? What does it look like? Well, it, it starts to come together as a total solution, okay. Andrew. Um, and when it becomes a total solution, it becomes efficient, flexible, adaptable, and more usable. Look, anybody can pick components and this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this, and then they call you in at the end of the day and wonder why they're complaining. You ever do a plastic model? <laughs> yes. Yeah? With yeah. a little glue and this and that, yeah, the other yeah. thing, right? Yeah, it fell yeah. apart. Right yeah. Right. yeah, right. <laughs> Imagine if you had to do your entire business as a plastic model, glue in little pieces and parts together in hopes that it's secure enough, be out of stable enough, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so when we look at the edge and we look at standardized design coupled with designing it for connectivity, which yeah. then leads to effective operation and maintenance we'll get into, it really starts to look like a solution and it's treated as a solution, mm -hmm. not as a component. Yep. Yeah. So I don't want to lead the witness here a little bit, but we're talking about designing with connectivity in mind. Yeah. And when you think about this environment in this space, yeah. it's now much more mission critical. Oh. So as mission critical as a data center was, yes. which was driving your core operations, yeah. these edge environments, your distributed IT environments, are just as mission critical. So the way that we used to manage that space, how do we, how do we learn from that and deploy some level of a management platform to get the same insights into this space as we did the, the typical mission critical space. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, absolutely right about that. And maybe even a little bit, take it a little bit further, the edgy environments now, maybe yep. some of them might have a life safety component to it. Mm, uh, mm, mm. Boy, that starts to change the game a little bit over, over the data center, doesn't it? Yep. Right? Data centers are cloud and this and that and the other thing and this and that. But are they, are they can, are, could people die if something goes wrong in a data center? Maybe, maybe not. In the edge, if I'm doing autonomous driving, robotic surgeries, this, that, and the other thing, all of a sudden there's a life safety component to it. So to your point, in some places, in some applications, the edge environment it might be more critical and have a little bit more impact than a large data center, okay? And so here, here we go, Andrew. As we start to talk about this stuff, most of these locations are lights out, lights out in respect of a security person, yep. a mechanical person, an electrical person, a man trap, mm -hmm. escorting people around. We couldn't, as a business, we couldn't afford to have all of that in 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 a hundred different locations. If I'm a yep. if I'm a retail or a hospital, I have all of these things, right? So, so the edge just lights out mission critical. And in order to do that effectively, to maintain the risk profile, you must must have it connected, remotely monitored, with mobile insights to your team. Right, mm -hmm. and this becomes a little bit it, it, what it what it does. Not only yeah. it manages your risk, Andrew. The other thing that people are always worried about is the wallet. Huh? Yes. Yeah. So 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 if I'm able to connect, if I'm able to remotely monitor, and I have, you know, some some insights to all of this, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. my cost is going to go down. If yeah. I'm going to run a business, all right, and my cost exceeds what my revenue, I'm not, not going to be in business long, am I? Right? No. So, so, so being able to operate and maintain 
in this environment mm -hmm. at a cost-effective way enables the business model. Okay, so it, we're talking about being able to manage this to, to uh, help with cost, but you know, when there's a lot of companies that I talk to today and they say everything we're doing is going to the cloud. Some <laughs> of them have a, a hybrid approach, some of them, every application that they, they have a path to, to getting into the cloud. When it comes to management uh, of this space, cloud is an option. Cloud-based platforms are out there. Can you, can you help us understand a little bit about the benefit of using a cloud-based platform to manage this space? Uh, I think the cloud-based platform is, uh, is, is the way to go. In fact, I don't think that you could do it really effectively without it. Okay. Imagine tying 100 different disparate locations together without the cloud. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think the, 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 the thing about the cloud is it's scalable, it's yeah. secure. Um, it allows you to actually dial up and dial down density too. That's okay. something very important. We don't always talk about. That's new. Yeah, uh, and, and I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's it's a way to say scalable. When I say dial up density, I could okay. I could dial up or dial down how much I need based on use case. Mm -hmm. And so the second thing that it, that the cloud allows us to do, which I think is really the way of the future here now, yep. is 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 the absorption of all of this data into a data lake, right? Mm -hmm. Um, actionable intelligence, Andrew, artificial intelligence, everybody, doesn't come by looking at a very small sample size. It absolutely does not, yep. right? The larger the sample size is, the more data that we have, because the environments are going to vary all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. So all of this helps to make actionable intelligence more intelligent, all right? And there's no better place to do that. In fact, I would argue there isn't any place to do it other than the cloud, yep. okay? All right? And then third is... You know, once you have all of that stuff, you're still going to need a little bit, uh, what I call, just the right amount of human touch. Yeah. I know everybody wants to talk about all these robots doing all this other kind of stuff, but, I mean, come on. The humans are still going to be here, right? Yeah. So you need a little bit of a human touch in there, right? Mm -hmm. This is where service bureaus come in. This is where data scientists come in. This is where people that have the ability to really sometimes interpret the data into more meaningful ways, mm -hmm. all right, is, is very good. I'll give you an example yep. where this comes in. Everybody knows this. How many people watch the weather forecast? Oh, yeah. That is a model-driven industry. But wait a minute. There's weather people, aren't there? Look at the sun coming down here, <laughs> and we're doing this over here, right? Hey, that is model-driven with the right amount of human touch. This is no different here, okay? You might need to be a weatherman. Okay. You <laughs> might need to be a weatherman. <laughs> Maybe. I think I'm getting a little too animated, right? They, they think I'd be talking about South Dakota. Um, but anyways, and so as we, as we get all of that, right, the right yeah. amount of human touch, and then yeah. all of a sudden it, it starts to become machine to machine. And it's still what that human touch is going to enable this whole thing. Okay. Cloud is the way to do this. You cannot do it without it. Yep. Okay? So you said two things that stuck out to me. Oh, boy. Uh, data lake yep. uh, and actionable intelligence. Yeah. So to me, I always simplify... So it's, it's, you have information available to be what I would probably call be more predictive. Yep. So today, when we think about operate and maintain and how do you operate and maintain these environments, what are the challenges that, that people are, or companies are running into today in the way that they manage the space? Well, it's difficult to manage without transparency. Okay. That's number one. I mean, they're, they're, they're just not able to see what's happening in their environment, right? Mm -hmm. And not only from a risk profile, but think about from a business expansion, capacity management, load management. Do I even have the ability to plug in something else, Andrew? I don't know if I can't mm -hmm. see it, right? So, so there's a lot of challenges with, with serving this um, in, in an unmanned, in a, in a geographically dispersed area, right? Yep. Commonality. So if I'm at 100 locations all across the place and I have to rely on 100 different people or organizations to service something, am I going to get the same service? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to be good in one area and not so good in another and who knows in another area? So, so having a very level understanding of what the expectation is mm -hmm. and how it operates and how it maintains is, is a challenge. It's, it's solved by having it connected, having transparency, and having a service organization. Okay. A service organization, not 20, all right? So I guess my next question would be, we just talked about how people are doing it. What's the, what's the traditional way? Yeah. 
if you have the visibility, connectivity, you, you design with connectivity, you have the visibility into the space, right. you're using the data lake, you're yeah. driving actionable, actionable intelligence. Yeah. What does this new model look like and what are the benefits of it? Oh, the new model is pretty, here's how it works today. I'll give you an example. You can see the picture over here, but <clears throat> here's how it works. Something sends an alarm. Somebody goes, oh my God, I got an alarm. Then they send somebody out there. They don't know what yet. Mm -hmm. Somebody goes out there, they take apart the unit, they go, oh, son of a gun, I need part 5458. And, and they go, don't I don't it. have 5458. Yep. So they pack up the box, they button it back up, mm -hmm. they call and they order a part, and they leave the site. Mm -hmm. And then sometime, whether it's day, next day, two days, two days, a week, who knows when, they come back and repair it. That's trip two. Now, in the meantime, the system, their business didn't stop, did it? But yet, the environment is in, in, in the peril. And it's taken two trips to figure it out. It's at risk. It's at risk. Or it could be down. Right, or it could be down. Yep. And it's taken two trips to figure it out. Yep. Switch to the future. So condition and predictive maintenance, actionable intelligence, is, is will allow us to be able to troubleshoot, identify what's wrong, mm -hmm. what needs to be replaced and fixed with one trip. Yep. So think about the business benefit just there, not only for the service organization that is doing the service, mm -hmm. right? It costs them money too as they go out twice. And that, that money obviously, or that cost is passed on to the, to the owner or to the end user. Yep. But in addition to that, the end user gets a double, double whammy. Not only is it more costly, but their business is still impacted. Right. Yep. So, so this condition predictive maintenance is going to reduce, mm -hmm. in industry terms, like this, everybody. <laughs> um, mean time between repairs. Mm -hmm. That's business value to somebody that's running a business. Yep. Think about your car. Your car goes in a shop. Let's say it takes a week. Yep. Versus an hour. Which do you like better? An hour. Bingo. Right. One of our producers. This car isn't working today. Hey. Mom has to drive you in. You show up to the office and mom drove you in. Yeah, perfect example. Hey, so, so it's really important to understand that. I mean, yeah. because at the end of the day, everybody, this should always relate back to mm -hmm. what's better and best for our, our clients. Absolutely. Okay? Okay? And so this whole transformation is really in an, in a, in an effort to make our clients mm -hmm. and their businesses more productive, more effective, more efficient, and more on. Yep. Yeah. So I think you kind of started to bring us into that last piece of what does this all mean for, for someone who, who does I this I jumped right. again. But it's all right. Perfect, perfect segue. Perfect okay. segue. So, so when we started, we really talked about the standard designs. We talked about the transparency and visibility. We talked about the operations and maintenance model. And, and the, the underlying theme to all of it is that this environment, this these applications, this practice is now a part of the overall business strategy. Right. So it's got to be profitable. Right. It's got to be profitable. Right. So there's three key elements: speed, cost, risk. Absolutely. Joe, can you kind of just kind of close us out with some final thoughts on on the key takeaways? I mean, I think the key takeaways are: look, you know, speed, cost, and risk is what makes the business world mm -hmm. move. When, when, as a businessman in a previous life, that's what I was concerned about, really. Speed, cost, and risk. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to lower my cost and increase my risk, mm -hmm. right? Uh, unless my business model changed, where I could take on a little yeah. bit more risk, okay? So speed, cost, and risk all have to mesh together in an equal way. But if there is a way for us to increase speed, reduce cost, while not impacting risk, yeah. right? That's the whole goal, right? That's the whole goal. And the way that you've walked us through this, and I'll give you credit, you've done a wonderful job. Thank you for Thank having you. us all. Thank you. Right? You've walked us through this thing. That a standard design helps with speed of deployment, right? Lower cost of CapEx. Yep. That's one, right? When you start to design that thing with connectivity, right? Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to be able to manage risk. I'm going to be able to identify risk, mm -hmm. okay? Plus, the connectivity also is going to allow us to do a more effective job in our repair and maintenance effort, mm -hmm. okay? So, so this whole thing wraps up to, with a standard design, designed for connectivity, 
with a with a operation and maintenance team with remote management, non mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, actionable intelligence, yep. wraps us up into this now becomes a a a model that businesses mm -hmm. can embrace and they can really help their business grow. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And that's the end of the day, really what we're what we're what we're thinking. The edge is helping our businesses, our partners, mm -hmm. okay, and everywhere else really sort of um, embrace digitization and bring um, use cases and um, and innovations to the forefront. And I'll say it this way, look, everybody talks about use cases and the edge mm -hmm. and all this other kind of stuff, I'll say it this way. I'm not sure I subscribe to that theory 100%. Yeah. So the automobile was invented, that required gas stations. Then families planned cross-country vacations. What I just said was the use case was developed after innovation was out. Follow? Interesting. Yep. Okay. In other words, cross-country vacation didn't inspire the car. Car, gas stations, and family said, boy, if there's cars and there's gas stations, and I could drive all the way across country. Mm -hmm. So so the, the use case in the edge, it's already out there. People are yeah. already developing this, and we're starting to see it every single day. Uber is a great example of innovation that came from a, a system and a deployment of a technology that was out there. Yeah. Uber didn't invent 4G, 4G invented Uber. Okay. Huh? To Joe's point, I think it, he closed that nicely. The innovation that drives these UK use cases is here today. Correct. We're experiencing it. Yes. There are technologies that we're using that are new to better our business. So the innovation is here today. Uh, and, and really, that, that's kind of the most important piece of it. So. So we, we thank everybody for joining. Some of you have been along with, with uh, along for the ride with us the entire time. Some of us, some of you joined along the way, but but ultimately it was some really uh, um, a, a discussion around some relevant topics that we think will help better you and your business. Uh, we'll probably be reaching out to have some discussions, make sure that you got everything out of this that, that you wanted to. And if there's some other areas that you want to discuss further, uh, we have the ability to discuss these use cases for you, discuss the way that some 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 clients have actually done this, uh, adopted this practice and really benefited from it. So right. we'd love to spend some more time with you. Don't let this be the end of the time that we have with you. We'd love to jump on the phone or, or you know, discuss over email and keep the dialogue going. We will keep this series going uh, um, again. We will be launching a new series in the, in the coming months, so stay tuned. You'll be here for hearing from us. But, uh, um, you know, we just appreciate you all, all being a part of this, and uh, uh, we hope you all have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, everybody. Bye.